Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to hit today, covering most of our usual topics. Everything from earthquakes to distant space on deck here as we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star brought the southern coronal hole extension through central heliographic longitudes. All active regions are turned over to the far side of the sun at this time. The solar wind is still pretty weak, but a small density increase in the stream brought back some action to the field, even if only a mouse's serving size. It was enough, however, to end the cosmic ray alert as we do have ones on the KP index chart overnight. Top quake of the last day struck Chile. Kind of a weird depth there between the normal surface rumbles and the low velocity zone. National Hurricane Center monitoring numerous systems in both the Atlantic and East Pacific. Going to be a lot to watch in the waters this weekend. Sticking with the weather for a moment, we come to the U.S. August Climate Report, a flip-flopped heat month where usually the West has its hottest months midsummer and the eastern U.S. cooks in August. It was considerably opposite for that four-and-a-half-week stretch. From report to forecast, but not of the weather. Early next week, NASA and NOAA will be holding a press conference to discuss solar forecasting. Included in their speakers list is Dr. Lisa Upton. She's spoken at our conferences before, and we do expect them to deliver the official government forecast for solar activity. I would expect them to say exactly what you've been hearing now for a few years. Most of them use the same indicators we do. On to the discoveries, and as always, there are observations and there are conclusions. Observations of lensing appear to be off from expectations, with some being ultra-powerful. Since they ascribe blame for lensing to dark matter, they say they must be missing something about those magic new particles. Well, here is where that dust and plasma make a huge difference. Dark matter is only supposed to have weak gravitational interactions, but normal matter not only has the gravity but the electromagnetic forces as well. They simply can't see all the material yet, as is indicated by their continuing discovery of dust and plasma halos like that around Andromeda. And when you are trying to blame dark matter, you don't get the electromagnetic forces, which provide the extra stuff they are now trying to put on dark matter. Folks, again, the lensing observations are real. What scientists do with those observations is another story. Up next, we're at the Van Allen belts for a major discovery about particle acceleration. They have long known that the plasma toroids around the Earth act as particle accelerators, but now they are finding that the plasma waves can allow these accelerations of electrons to reach ultra-relativistic levels, temperatures of more than 100 billion degrees Fahrenheit, dwarfing the temperature of Earth's core and even the Sun. What's interesting is the effect that these should have on the particle precipitation down into the atmosphere, especially during enhanced solar activity, when the Van Allen belts are known to energize and even push down into the upper atmosphere in times of significant magnetospheric compression. This is the realm of the still-being-discovered electromagnetic coupling between space energy and our planet. Last but not least, they have found a strange supernova, one that makes them realize that their characterizations of nova might be off their categorizations of NOVA might be off, what they've informed scientists about dark energy might be off, and the type of stars capable of the block-the-vent NOVA mechanism just keeps getting wider. This time, the progenitor is a protoplanetary system, a young one forming out of an old remnant. The young star was hurling immense stellar winds, which then got cut off, leading to an explosion. This little guy out in space is the strangest yet example of the accumulation of material, the halting of the outflow from the corona of the star, the buildup of pressure, heat, and energy, followed by the release. What you should take away from this is that indeed, any star enduring what I described is at tremendous risk of a micronova, with the star being left behind after a snake-like shedding of its outer skin. This applies to our star when we cross the galactic current sheet, take the dust and plasma, and the galactic magnetic reversal. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about all of these topics with our playlists right here on YouTube or on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org where all of our top videos can be found. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.